Jai Baba. This is a song by Madhusudan. And the meaning of the song is, you have to go back to your real home and leave this illusion. This is a false dream at the of free will. The God situated in you, trapped into illusion. Remove illusion to see your own beautiful form. This is all his game. He wanted to see his own form, mirror of ashes. Human is the best example. You don't become unhappy. There is no uh, uh, unhappiness and sorrow. Uh, there is uh, yeah, no sorrow and dying. You are complete. Don't forget. See your own form. This is explained by Lord Meher for him. His arrival, Madhusudan says, search for where is that real home. Tohe apne ghar jana, tohe apne ghar jana, hai maya chodna, maya. Hey, Maya, Chodna. Jhuta hai ye sapna, ye liye manu mana. Tohe apne ghar jana, tohe apne ghar jana. Tujh mein jo ishwar basa, Maya bandhan me fasa, tujh me jo ishwar basa. Maya bandhan me fasa, maya hata dekh le. Maya hata dekh le nij roop suhana. Tohe apne ghar jana, tohe apne ghar jana. Ye sara hai khel prabhu ka, dekhna tha usse roop uska. Ye sara hai khel prabhu ka, dekhna tha usse roop uska. Aine banai khak ke, aine banai khak ke manushi uch namuna tohe apne ghar jana tohe apne ghar jana tu vrutha na naraj hona nahi sukh hai na dukh marna tu vrutha na naraj hona Nahi sukh hai na dukh mar na Tu purn hai bhool na Tu purn hai bhool na Dekh roop tu apna Tohe apne ghar jana Tohe apne ghar jana ये मेहर प्रभु का है कहना हुआ उसके लिए उनका ना मधुसूदन खोजना मधुसूदन खोजना कौन है वो ठिकाना तो है अपने घर जाना तो है अपने घर जाना है माया छोड़ना है माया छोड़ना तो है अपने घर जाना तो है अपने घर जाना अवतार मेहर बाबा की जय थैंक यू that was nice vj yeah, uh, yeah Very thank you yeah it's soothing a high and pitch. lyrical oh thank you thank you yeah. i took a high pitch actually sometimes it goes on high pitch <laughs> oh no I, it yeah, wasn't noticeable okay thank you 
Yeah. I just know one word, brother. Yeah. I can understand yeah. one word in that word, brother. <laughs> Maya. You know yes. Maya, illusion. Maya, chorna. <laughs> leave, leave Maya. Uh... Yeah. Well, uh, any anybody want a few quotes to start with here? <clears throat> this is, uh, you know, that kind of intense uh, reading of Rosalie. Here's here's what Baba says about suffering. The pur the purpose of all suffering is to remember me more and more. The purpose of all suffering is to remember me more and more. And it certainly works. <laughs> this is Baba again. Those who lay their head at my feet and are mine I put all their stars and planets in my cup of tea and drink them up. Just leave everything to me and obey me. For those who lay their head at my feet and are mine, I put all their stars and planets in my cup of tea and drink them up. Just leave everything to me and obey me. I don't know if some of the people will get this one because uh, I don't know if this is known so well in, in India but this is H.L. Uh, Mencken Puritanism the haunting fear that someone somewhere is having a good time Puritanism was a very rigid, a very rigid and straight, serious uh, uh, sect of people. Puritanism, the, the Puritanism, the haunting fear that someone, somewhere, is having a good time. <laughs> good. So hey, this Jeff, is. I have a, yeah, you got one. I have, I have a few quotes. I mean, maybe I'll just uh, read them out. Read them out. Go here. for it. Yeah. <coughs> I have this beautiful book, The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo, I think, N-E-P-O. Uh, there are a bunch of quotes here. Uh, let me read a couple. Uh, it says, The more spacious and larger our fundamental nature, the more bearable the pains in living. Let me read that again. The more spacious and larger our fundamental nature, the more bearable the pains in living. Veins, the pains what? What's that? When the pains what? Pains in living. Pains in living. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's by Wayne Mueller. M U L L E R. Mueller. I don't know. <laughs> and then there is uh, one more here on page uh, fifty. And actually, this one, this book is uh, so good. Uh, they give a quote and they have a story that follows it. And actually, it's very nice. Uh, here, there's one by Lao Tzu uh, on simplicity. <clears throat> he says, I just have three things to teach. Simplicity, patience, compassion. These are your greatest te treasures. Simple in actions and in thoughts. You return to the source of being. Uh, once again, I just have three things to teach. Simplicity, patience, compassion. These are your greatest treasures. Simple in actions and in thoughts. You return to the source of being. That by Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu, and, yeah. Yeah, Lao Tzu. And then there is one more here. <clears throat> one story, other you make. Melody Beetle. B A T T. Oh, sorry. Melody Betty, I think. <coughs> sorry. Weakness. Our strength will continue if we allow ourselves the courage to feel scared, weak, and vulnerable. Uh, let me read that again. Wow. Our, str our strength will continue if we allow ourselves the courage to feel 
scared, weak, and vulnerable. And one last one, this is uh, 122. Uh, again, this is by Lord Su. All streams flow to the sea because it is lower than they are. Humility gives its power. Once again, all streams flow to the sea because it is lower than they are. Humility gives its power. Jai Baba. Yeah. I think uh, you said there are stories also. We know, we know it. One story you may tell. Say that again, Sham. Uh, one uh, he says that there is one story uh, after every quote. So one story he may tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let, let me, yeah. Uh, th this one is the first one I read. How does it taste? Right. The more spacious and larger, larger our fundamental nature, the more bearable the pains in living. By Wayne Mueller. So the story goes. An aging Hindu master grew tired of his apprentice complaining and so one morning sent him for some salt. When the apprentice returned, the master instructed the unhappy young man to put, to put a handful of salt in a glass of water and then drink it. Then he asked, how does it taste? The master asked. Bitter, spit the apprentice. The master chuckled and then asked the young man to take the same handful of salt and put it in the lake. The two walked in silence to the nearby lake and once the apprentice swirled his handful of salt in the water, the old man said, now drink from the lake. As the water dripped down the young man's chin, the master asked, how does it taste? Fresh, remarked the apprentice. Do you, do you taste the salt? asked the master. No, said the young man. At this, the master sat beside the serious young man who so reminded him of himself and took his hands, offering the pain of life is pure salt. No more, no less. The amount of pain in life remains the same, exactly the same. But the amount of bitterness we taste depends on the container we put the pain in. So when you are in pain, the only thing you can do is to enlarge your sense of things. Stop being a glass, become a lake. That's yeah, the story. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. Yeah, excellent. <clears throat> hey, I had, um, I had a thought. I don't know if you folks are interested, but <clears throat> I met... Um, and I uh, first met Dr. Harry Kenmore back in around 1970. <clears throat> and, you know, he, and Baba said he's one of his Mondali. He's a Mondali member that very few people really know about. And Baba said, in fact, that he would be a perfect master in this next life. But he had a, a great times with Baba, and I thought I'd tell you a little bit about somebody who was destined to become one of Baba's intimate mandali. He's buried there at Lower Maribad with the other mon men mandali. So anyway, but before I do, I'm, uh, Alan is a little familiar with this, but I'm going to read something because this per this com ties in with Harry Kenmore. So I'm going to read, uh, it's from uh, Life at its Best called The Flash from the Eternal. This is about the grace of a perfect master. The act of a perfect master is not repetitive. It is not the merely, merely the redoing of something previously experienced in the context of a new setting. It is the doing of something that cannot be done within the restrictions of the experiences of duality. It is a creation of the utterly new a descent of the truth into the false. Hence, its creativity is infinite. The redeeming act, this is the line that's 
The redeeming act of a perfect master is a flash of the eternal in the midst of what is otherwise nothing but rigidly determined causation. This is the mystery of divine grace bestowed by the perfect master. So, in other words, the grace supersedes the law of cause and effect, karma. So, anyway, uh, So what I thought I'd do <coughs> is uh, I'll tell you a little bit about Dr. Kenmore. And uh, uh, like I say, not many, uh, uh, anybody met Dr. Kenmore here? Al, did you ever meet uh, Dr. Kenmore? Ah. May, maybe Marge did, let's see. Rosalie, did you ever meet Dr. Kenmore? No, but I, I heard a recording, on, a recording of him saying the Master's Prayer. Yeah. So I, in a way, I met him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, here's, I'll tell you the story about Harry Kimmore kind of quickly. He, uh, it, it, his parents were from, his father was from uh, Austria and his mother was from Romania. They were Jewish. They came to this, they came to this country around the turn of the last century. And Harry was born in 1910 in New York, and he grew up in New York City, mainly in Manhattan. And he was, as a kid, he was very, um, very, he was fearless, big hearted, you know, larger than life. Even when he was, uh, when I met him, he was one of the, lar much larger than life, you might say. And he acted in some of those early children's uh, movies. Spanky and Argan comedy and the Little Rascals, little stand-ins for for those. But he sang. He was very talented musically. He was a good athlete and natural leader. And like I say, he was very fearless, and and independent. But then, around his mid-teens, he started having a problem with night blindness. He was taken to a doctor, and the doctor said that. He had this congenital eye disease called retinitis uh, pigmentosa. Uh, 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 Linot had that also. But the doctor said that he would one day be totally blind. You know, well, that day came very quickly, and he woke up one morning, and everything was dark, but he could feel the sun coming in the windows, and he, everything was dark. And, oh, he was horrified. He, he was completely blind. And he found out later that his parents knew of this condition, but they hadn't told him. And he was very upset that they didn't give him any forewarning. The next, so he's age 16, and he's totally blind. And, you know, like I say, he was very, after such a, a promising life, he found himself blind. He was very upset about this. And when he asked his father, "What can he? What could? What would he now be able to do as in a, as a living? Do for a living?" His father said, "Well, get a cart and sell rags on the streets of Manhattan." His father really showed no real concern for him. He was deeply hurt. I mean, I, I guess selling rags, <coughs> uh, on, you know, were, was something that blind people did. It was a profession. Back in the, this, we're talking about the 30s. Anyway, he decided to leave home. He left high school. <clears throat> he had all these buddies, good friends and everything. He left it all. And he, <clears throat> and he said he became a hobo. VJ, do you know what a hobo is? <clears throat> no. It's kind of a bum. He just kind of got on trains. He started riding trains all over the country. Okay. And and there was this traveling circus that uh, ad adopted him, and so he became part of this this uh, uh, you know circus troupe, <clears throat> and he would sing and entertain. He would he got to, real good at telling jokes, and he could play a lot of different instruments. <clears throat> and then also one of the things that he was able to do was to hypnotize people. 
<clears throat> he could hypnotize a whole audience and put them to sleep. He somehow learned that one guy open, <clears throat> kind of, <clears throat> what can I say, they kind of opened him up to uh, occult, to some of the occult things. <clears throat> and he didn't know what he was doing, you know. So, <clears throat> But anyway, so he was on the road for a number of years, and then he decided to come back to New York <clears throat> and maybe pursue, finish his education <clears throat> and pursue a career. So anyway, what he did, he got, he got finished off his high school <clears throat> and he got admitted to this <clears throat> chiropractic school. And, and he had a buddy of his <clears throat> who was already studying. So they, <clears throat> he, he would help him out, his friend. And so he learned how to be a chiropractor. And he did very, <clears throat> very well. <clears throat> and um, I mean, later on he developed certain powers where he could give someone an adjustment without even touching them. He could, and you could feel your, your vertebrae kind of click, you know, okay. click into place even though he wasn't even touching you. So he had amazing abilities. Uh, I mean, remember he, he was telling me that there were times when he, um, he, would re he would cast out spirits that people, that, you know, entities that were possessing people. He even had that, those abilities. And um, so, but anyway, one, at one point, uh, I think around in the mid 40s he he met a woman at the the lighthouse for the blind and they got married and she introduced him to spirituality <clears throat> now then after a couple of years they were divorced and then from then on Harry really remained alone <clears throat> and, and he didn't have any assistance he just did his work and he was basically <clears throat> very much uh, d dedicated to his work. <clears throat> but at one point he began meditating. And he told me he, he meditated for 10 years. Now Harry, <clears throat> to meditate, I mean he was so intense a person that 10 years of meditation for him, we're talking about, you know, uh, that would be like a couple hundred years for most people. But in, in one of his meditations, he, he uh, got into such a deep place that suddenly he could see the room he was in. And uh, not only that, but he could fly around and he flew around the neighborhood to see what his neighborhood looked like. You know, while he, he, in other words, his, his inner eye opened that wasn't handicapped by his physical blindness. And so he, he started doing all this kind of stuff. And... Um, I mean, at one point he said uh, that he, he broke into the subtle world which he called the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> he said the fragrances of that garden were like nothing here on earth. And I, I remember him telling me that he uh, even came to the, the powers of the, the temptation of powers on the fourth plane and he had to push past that. <clears throat> So, I mean, he's like a little different from some of the other monthly. <clears throat> um, so anyway, um, so at one point he said he got into seeing his past lives. And he understood the whole logic, the, the cause and effect of past lives. He looked at his past lives <clears throat> and he could see no reason for his blindness. There was no explanation, and that would infuriated him because he felt so handicapped by being blind, <clears throat> even though he was about as as versatile a blind per, uh, as a blind person can be. But he he saw that there was no reason for his blindness; he couldn't see. But then uh, one day, uh, Dale Walken, who was uh, one of the longtime Baba lovers, came to him as a chiropractor. And she felt he was really excellent as a healer and chiropractor. And she started, uh, and Margaret Crass came and different than the Baba lovers. And they told him about Baba and he became very drawn to Baba. <clears throat> so he, um, so he, 
this was around 19, you know, early 50s and everything. In 19, no, 1954, actually. Then he went to a sea baba at, at Del Monaco Hotel, and then he came down to the center in Myrtle Beach. <clears throat> and he went and saw Baba in the lagoon cabin. This is where it's... So he went into the lagoon cabin, and after the, the, the normal pleasantries and, you know, words with Baba, he, he very seriously said, Baba, why did I become blind? Mm. <clears throat> and Baba said, I created your blindness. You were destined to become a renowned world world-renowned surgeon, but you wouldn't have looked for me. In other words, as a world-renowned surgeon, he would have been in the beck and call of all the rich people, <clears throat> all the royalty of the world, and he wouldn't have had that chance to seek... Uh, <clears throat> Baba, that's what Baba said, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have looked for me. And that was the first time in his whole life that he accepted his blindness yeah. and here's the interesting thing is that th th that line that I read here from uh, th this is why you know where Baba says the redeeming act of a perfect master is a flash of the eternal in the midst of of what is otherwise nothing but rigidly determined causation. This is the mystery of divine grace bestowed by the perfect master. In other words, the grace, the grace comes from outside the karmic cause and effect. So he could not see any reason for his blindness because it was a gift from Baba, Baba's wow. grace. So, now, um, uh, uh, and now, then I'll, I'll end this in a second here. But I, here's some neat things. <clears throat> he, they said, uh, the Mandali said he was a lot like Dr. Ghani. He could say anything around Baba that he wanted. And when he came to, to he, he came to work on Baba after the second accident. And he worked, you know, about four hours a day intensively. I mean, at different, uh, four times a day working intensely to get Baba walking again. Baba's uh, femur was not in its socket, it was on the edge. And he had to work until Baba's femur went into the socket. You know, uh, it was excruciatingly painful. Baba was not able to walk. And he worked and worked for a month solid and he got Baba's femur there so that Baba could bear weight. But the whole time that he was in Mondale Hall, because his table, he set it up in Mondale Hall, uh, Harry, Baba let Harry say anything. So, you know, he, and he was kind of, you know, like for example, Baba said, how do you like this place? Well, it's a, a wonderful place, wonderful food, wonderful help, wonderful people to be with, and a wonderful guy who runs this joint. I mean, that's the kind of way he talked to Baba. Sure. But he one time he was working with Baba and he says, "Now I know, I know what we you and I are. I am zero, and you are the one." And and he was like, and he was very meticulous in working with Baba. And and at one point when he was working on Baba, he said, "Baba, you are perfection, and I am a perfectionist." <laughs> That's kind of. And uh, one time, oh, oh, and then he said, um, he said, you, you are a big clam. And you have clammed up all these years. <laughs> when you open that clam, when you open your shell, a pearl will, will drop out. And Baba <laughs> said, no, not a pearl. The pearl of all pearls will drop out. So he just said things like this. But here's another time. He was working on Baba in Mondale Hall. And Baba he had Baba standing up. And he was assessing the stress on Baba's right leg and hip. 
he was on the floor, you know, checking out, trying to assess how Baba was taking his own weight. And at one point he said, Baba, this is my advice to you. When you get peeved at the Mondali for not obeying you properly, what I want you to do, and, and you want to kick them, give them a, a quick, a, a swift kick in the pants for their uh, lack of discipline, remember, don't use your right leg to <laughs> kick them. Use your left leg. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he, he was quite a guy. Anyway, that's my, I, I thought I'd give you a little, I have a whole story of my meeting with Baba, but I won't, you know, I won't go with that, but. Yes, yes, yeah. I have, I have a, a, a little poem that Baba wrote uh, to Harry. Harry was leaving India. Yeah. And Baba, Baba wrote, leave, leave your heart in Marabai and Marazai. Take your mind and body to New York. Inwardly eat only Baba. Outwardly steaks and pork. <laughs> yeah. No, he was a um, very entertaining guy, but what a presence he had. The, the most refined and purified presence, even though his personality was was like a kind of bombastic New Yorker, but he was very rarefied, you might say. Anyway, Jeff, Jeff what's the book? What's the book like? Uh, does it go way into the past with him? That a little has, bit, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, that's uh, uh, but uh, yeah. Steve, Steve did Baba you meet uh, Dr. Kenmore? Oh, I didn't, Jeff. Uh huh. Yeah. Prakash, what you? No, no. I just thought of asking you. Did Baba say anything about his uh, being up there in terms of his uh, spiritual advancement and uh, things like that? Because uh, all that he experienced in his life. Well, you had this great awareness, and he had these uh, gr uh, great abilities, but he said when he got into Baba, Baba drew a curtain around him, um. and he had nothing, he had no, he lost it all. Baba put a curtain, and all those abilities that he had, uh, they still kind of flowed from him, but he didn't consciously make use of it. Mm. So Baba took him off of that. It's very interesting, with all of his uh psychic abilities you might say and even his advanced state um baba just dropped the curtain around him and basically said you know just remember me and live for me and that's what he did uh, but baba got a kick out of him because at marizade it was all very quiet for years very very quiet and when Harry came, he was just talking all day, <laughs> just, you know, and he would even sing at night. You know, he'd be over on the other side singing when nobody would do that. But Eric said this, the only person that uh, was allowed to do this would be Dr. Ghani, who had a very close relationship with Bob, his childhood buddy. Yeah. And Jeff. Bob would not get disturbed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jeff. Uh, I I was really impressed with that uh, story where uh, uh, he used to recite Parvardigar prayer in a very loud uh, way and very profound and very uh, nice way. And then uh, somebody told him that, oh, oh, you recite very loudly or you should be very soft or something like he gave him suggestion. And then he was uh, very soft on the uh, when Baba asked him next time so after he finished Baba says why why you are so softly you are telling go your original way uh, something like that yeah no exactly yeah. and in fact Baba said I mean he, Harry told me that Baba that he went up seven flights to deliver that prayer 
<laughs> meaning meaning that he <clears throat> probably was saying it from the soul itself. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, straight from the soul, and and you know, I, I experienced it many times, and it was like if you imagine a, a hurricane coming through your village, and you know the shutters and everything on the windows are going, everything is gone. By the time that prayer was over, the place was laid waste. I mean, the, the, the it, you know, it cleared out everything, and it would just be this serene, peaceful, like not, not a sun scar around for a certain time. He just blasted them all away. Yeah, yeah. that's how uh, loudly he, he would also do prayer in New York. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, it 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 would scare you at first. I mean, because it, it was so powerful and so forceful that you know your your heart had to get used to it. But it it blew all sorts of things out of the way. <laughs> you were cleared out for a little bit. <laughs> there is one story, uh, Jack small about him yeah uh he when he was at marazat uh, he they he went out with pukar uh, outside and uh, then uh, there was uh, some muddy place so pukar thought that uh, his shoes and all his uh, it will be spoiled so what he did he picked harry can more <laughs> harry can more was so heavy he yeah. picks him and he crosses that puddle of uh, uh, water, muddy thing. Anyway, later on, then when Baba came to know this, and he asked Pukar, he was unhappy with Pukar. Why did you lift him? You are have heart problem and this uh, and uh, and later on, Pukar also got a heart attack after that. Uh, oh, really? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So that was. No, he was. Yeah. <clears throat> he was always trying to get me to get a, 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 a pursue a career. <laughs> and, but but I was agonizing at the time, what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do with my life? And I would go in and he would just blast me. Well, you know, you, 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 what are you going to do? You're doing nothing. You're wasting your life. And I mean, but he would say it like a like a, um, a, a New Testament prophet I mean the Old Testament prophet laying down the law and I'd come out of there and I'd be completely free of worry about what I was going to do with my life and then it would kind of build up over the next month and I would go in and see him again and he'd blast me about what are you doing you know you're just going to wait tables or something what are you going to do with your life and and all that and I'd come out of there and I'd be just so free he just he kind of just blasted it out of me but one time, I just tell you, one time I brought a buddy who came all the way from Seattle to meet him. And, you know, after the exchange and everything, he, um, uh, very briefly, he said, he asked me about, now what are you going to do with your life, Jeff? And everything. So he gets on that subject again. And I say, well, I don't know, Harry, I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, you know. And he goes, the trouble with you, Jeff! You're just a mad dog roaming the face of the earth. I mean, he says that like, like some, some you know, Old Testament prophet, you know, just laying down. I mean, I did, I didn't, I never took it personally. It was, it, it was something so, so purifying about it that it. I felt freed up. <clears throat> But I mean, if he got a hold of Alan Manukian, I don't know what he'd do. Blast him, <clears throat> blast him all the way, and <clears throat> yeah. That's so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. So, at some point of time, did he get some eyesight back? I mean, uh... no, never got any. <clears throat> he probably could have healed himself uh, with his powers. But uh, at, after meeting Baba, Baba <clears throat> uh, just put an end to all that. 
Was he into singing and uh, painting or uh, any art like that? I mean, you... He wasn't a painter, but a, a, as a child, you know, in his <clears throat> teenage years, he was a singer and and played instruments, acted in mm -hmm. plays, athlete, everything. <clears throat> he was like had all the great qualities. How long did he live, Jeff? I mean. <clears throat> He died in about 1972 or three, I think. Okay, not long after Baba left. Yeah. 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 When when Baba dropped his body, you know, before that, uh, when Baba was there physically, uh, Baba used to caress his cheeks, like uh, whenever he used yeah. to, when he used to see, uh, sit closer to Baba, and Baba used to caress his. And, and to see and whether then, he shaved properly too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Being and blind. Then, yeah. And then when Baba dropped his body, and after that Harry happened to visit Maraza, and he was in the fields, and then he felt the same caress at his cheek. Uh, so he knew that Baba is there. Yeah. So he. Yeah. He last, last him. Star Sun. Well, no, he, here, here's the story. <clears throat> when he saw Baba, I guess in 1968 or 67, no, 68, Baba, uh, Baba told him to come back next year, that he would see him next year. And then Baba dropped a body, and so Harry got a hold of Eric and said, Baba said he would see me one more time. You know, should I come? And and Eric said, yes, come. But come after the 69 darshan. So he came to Marizad. And, you know, Baba had passed on, you know, dropped his body and everything. One day they were walking down the approach road. <clears throat> and uh, just, they would take walks up and down the approach road. And uh, as they were walking, uh, Harry des describes this to us. And a farmer came from the fields there and came over to them and he was tall and he didn't he was very uh, friendly came up I mean farmers would usually kind of keep a distance he came right up and uh, Harry and uh, and and he he oh, no. caresses his face uh. and Harry says and after he goes he says who was that and, and Eric said, that was a farmer from the fields. Mm -hmm. Harry says, that was not a farmer. Those were not the hands of a farmer. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and he says, where is he? And Eric looked and the guy had, was gone. I mean, I, and it's just open fields. Where did the guy go, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so the Mondale, you know, the women Mondale, he told that story to the women Mondale and the men, and they felt that Baba fulfilled that promise yeah. to, to give him his darshan uh, one last time. But yeah, he said, no, that was not the, um, those were not the hands of a farmer. They were too soft. And, and a farmer would never come up to, uh, you know, Erich and a Westerner and do such a thing. So uh -huh. they, they, they were convinced it was Baba. So, uh, I've yacked on. Mayor Prasad, what do you have over there in Seattle? So, oh, it's... Uh, I don't have anything, but it's very sunny today. Yeah, oh good, yeah. You can probably see Mount Rainier then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Where in Seattle do you live? I live in Redmond. Redmond, uh, okay. Near Bellevue. Yeah. I don't know if when you were here whether Redmond was... Yeah, Redmond was there. Yeah. <clears throat> I lived on Queen Anne Hill for a while, Capitol Hill, up at yeah, Ravenna Park. Now pretty, you know, they're pretty popular places. Yeah. Very really hard to find housing in those places. Now. Yeah. <clears throat> Any, uh, just checking to see. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I got something. Balna too <clears throat> used to say, all the Mandalay had to learn this one yoga. They had to master one yoga. 
in their life with Baba. And it was just, he would say, it's just three words. Sitting, doing, nothing. <laughs> you had to be able to do that and, and lo not lose your composure. <laughs> because, you know, there'd be so, mon so many monly around, you might be left out. So you're just left there <clears throat> with nothing to do. <laughs> It sounds it sounds like night watch though. They weren't so yeah. sort of watch them There was a little story on, on the doing nothing part. You know that if, um it was I think it may have been Baidu or or uh, one of those people who uh, Baba said all you have to do is just do nothing and you will that's all you have to do and all the problems will be solved. And uh, I think it was Baidul that said, I can do that. That sounds pretty simple. I can just, I can do nothing. And Baba asked him, okay, why don't you do that? And he told him to ask um, to do nothing and stand in the room. So he was standing there after, uh, I think, a few minutes passed. Uh, Baba asked, uh, well, were, were you doing nothing? And he said, yeah, I was not doing anything. I was just, I'm just here. And doing nothing, and Baba said, "Okay, did you did you see that um, what was going on here?" And he said, "Yeah, I, I saw what's going on. Uh, I heard everything that you are talking." He said, "Yeah, that's good. And what else were you doing?" And nothing else. I'm just doing nothing here. Baba said, "Were you breathing?" And he said, "Yes, I was breathing. And you were hearing everything going on. Yes, <laughs> I was doing something." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Breathing, listening, hearing, smelling, seeing, all of those. Yeah. You know, Dr. Duncan, who was very qualified as a doctor and, and uh, all that, and he, after he did the, uh, the Wayfarers, uh, you know, he, Baba gave him nothing to do. And he would sit in his room and there was nothing. He, he'd give notes to somebody like Bao and say, Baba, you know, give me something to do and everything. Baba wouldn't give him anything to do. Yeah. He would go, get so frustrated, he would sometimes take his motorcycle apart all the way down to the last bolt and then put it all back together again. Or he would <laughs> throw all of the stuff out of his room and then bring it all back in. Yeah. Baba gave him nothing, truly gave him nothing to do yeah. Yeah. with all of his qualifications. <clears throat> And, you know, that's maybe to break the whole idea of the doer, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, oh, so qualified and, and, and Bao is doing all of these things. Bao, I'll help you do that, you know. Well, I'll ask Baba and Baba's just, no, no. I'll give you something to do. Baba kind of, kind of putting, I'll give you something to do. Can you imagine? He was so frustrated. Sometimes uh, Sheila Fenster would say he would get in the trust compound and drive round and around and around and around just going <laughs> crazy <laughs> yeah Ustaji was like that too Baba told him to do nothing he just told him to just stay by his side that's about it yeah <clears throat> yeah in the same in the same subject I have this quote very small from Lao Tzu uh -huh. you're talking about doing, you're talking about doing nothing yeah so this is muddy water let stand becomes clear yeah excellent yeah <clears throat> muddy muddy water when it's let left to stand becomes clear becomes clear <clears throat> yeah I mean, I mean, we are basically muddy water. The, the mud doesn't go away, but if we can calm down enough, yes. you know, it, it will become clear. But it's not like you ever get rid of the mud. I know. <laughs> Maybe that's what Baba wants from him, you know, just don't do nothing. Just stay there. <laughs> just sit. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, some of you have heard this, but Bao used to say, uh, uh, share this where, <laughs> Bao was very busy from morning till night. 
and uh, you know he'd be and then he'd be on night watch and Bob would give him correspondence and he had to do cleaning and walking the dogs he had all this stuff and one day Baba gave, told him to uh, to look after and do things for Gestaji now Gestaji didn't do anything all he would do all week is collect pieces of paper and twigs and pieces of wood and make a fire and, at, for his bath on the weekend and he would tie up the bathroom for an entire day and that's all he did and and when he bathed I mean Bao said that when he bathed he would this is what he would do he would uh, he would uh, first wash from his uh, first he'd wash his hands then he'd go from his wrist to his elbow and he you know for a half hour he'd be doing that and then he'd pour water over that then he'd go from the elbow to the <laughs> top of the shoulder all this is going on and Baba gave him this uh, additional job and you know at one point Baba kind of got it out of Bao that he was not happy he was like and got it out of him. Bao said, "Well, you know, Bob, you know, I'm working from morning till night, and and you, and Gustavus not doing anything, and then you you're <laughs> having him help him out. And and but this is this is the one I I remember this this is verbally from Baba, exact quote. He said to Bao, Gustavus does more for me in five minutes doing nothing." than you do in working for me from morning till night. <laughs> what kind of world is that? Gustaji <laughs> does more for me in five minutes doing nothing. <laughs> Jeff, uh, yeah. when it, for the first time I was in um, at Myrtle Beach, uh, I was staying in the near cabin, and Elizabeth told me that that's, that's where Gustaji used to stay. And he would he liked to be there because he wanted to hear immediately when Baba clapped so he because he, he had nothing to do. He was just yeah. quiet and sitting. Yeah, Baba but said his last don't even, you don't even hear about him sort of. You knew yeah. he was there if you read Lord Mayhem, but it was he was almost invisible in you know. Yeah, he came in nineteen fifty two. Yeah. <coughs> Baba. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Baba said his last son's scars were connected with ice cream. <coughs> uh, but when he was here in 52, Baba gave the. <coughs> they were here for a longer period. There weren't a whole lot of people, especially after the accident, but Baba gave each one of them an allowance. <clears throat> and sometimes they would eat in town, a little restaurant or some, you know, a little cafe. And, and Gustaji would use all his money, invariably, <clears throat> use <coughs> the money for <coughs> food to buy milkshakes. <coughs> he loved milkshakes, so <clears throat> he just fed himself on milkshakes. Jeff, I wonder where he went when... Uh, uh, did he go out to Mayhem out with Duncan and, and Adi and them? Where did he go? Huh. I can't remember whether he went. Is I think he funny? was. <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I don't know, Duncan. actually. Yeah, that's, so, uh, it's, that's why I think it's, it's like he's almost invisible. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> hey Steve, <coughs> you can say you can pass if you want, but how did you uh, hear of Baba? Any? Um, <coughs> well, <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, I was in college, um, and. I had uh, just broken up with, actually she broke up with me, my first first girlfriend. It's very tra traumatizing, um, very upsetting. But 
anyway, in that near near the college one day, I went uh, for a haircut. Went to a barber shop. Is this in uh, California or? Yeah, this was in Malibu. Malibu, oh, yeah. Um, all right, there's some. I live very close to the Air Force Base. And <clears throat> uh huh. A lot of jets take off. Anyway, um, so I sat down in the barber's chair, and there's this enormous poster of Obama right in front of him. It's like from the, they have these windows as you're sitting in the chair, you could see the ocean and the chair and stuff. And you know, on the wall, he had this, this poster, and I asked him, who is this? And, and he told me. Um, and he said, that's Mayor Baba. And I thought that he, he looked a little familiar. And um, also, I had somebody else, one of my co-students, uh, fellow students, had mentioned Baba in, in passing. And <clears throat> so anyway, um, a little while later, I moved up to Santa Barbara, and one night I I heard about this. This I think I saw a, a hand bill on a telephone call um, talking about you know, announcing a, a a meeting. So I went, and um, they showed the Pravardigar film, and uh, I had a very nice experience uh, suddenly, and I thought uh, it just felt kind of blissful. So uh, I thought, all right, this is very nice. Um, so I was living in Santa Barbara at that time, and um, I knew about the Bodhi Tree, uh, a bookstore in, in Los Angeles. So I went there and got the the discourses and started reading the discourses. And um, then I also got uh, Ivy Deuce's book, uh, How a Master Works. And um, oh, I had been sort of introduced to Yogananda, and I had read the autobiography of a, of a yogi um, before. Um, that was I think still when I was in LA. Anyway, so reading uh, how a master works, I was struck by how different these, you know, what Baba said and the narrative in, in Yogananda's story. Um, but I, I was kind of on the fence for a while there and uh, going back and forth. And later I, I moved up to the Bay Area and uh, met uh, a lot of people in the Northern California group. And um, one night I heard Robert Dreyfus tell his story. And that was so mesmerizing. Robert had a way of, I don't know what it was, but for me it was just, you know, it was really, really an experience. So, um, and then as the years went by, um, you know, Bao was, would come around every, every so often. And uh, I think Dr. Dr. Barucha, I met him there at the, in Berkeley, um, Adele, um, Marguerite Poli. Phyllis. Phyllis, yeah, Phyllis, thank you. That's right, Phyllis came. Indeed. Um, so, um, that's that's kind of it. Um, Was there any particular moment that it just became more real than <clears throat> than it had been previously, or was it just kind of a very gradual? Uh, <clears throat> 
kind of conviction that occurred? Well, I, in Santa Barbara, um, I, I remember being really absorbed in um, The God Man, Pergam's book. Um, yeah. That really, you know, um, that said a lot. Um, Did you go to India? No, I have not been to India. Wow. Wow. Um, I, I want to <laughs> very much now, um, of course, but, uh, you know, maybe that'll happen. I hope it does. Uh, things open up. It's a, yeah, it's <clears throat> un <clears throat> unexpectedly powerful, India. It'll take oh. you by surprise. <clears throat> Yeah. And, ba and Bao used to say that Baba has put a treasure in his tomb for each of us. Whether we pick it up in this lifetime or next lifetime, whenever, it is there awaiting us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Adi used to say, Adi K says you get a transfusion when you come to the Samadhi. <clears throat> get the transfusion. All new yeah. blood. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. I, I've been uh, reading a lot of books lately. Um, and uh, I'm reading uh, Mehra Meher, the first yeah. volume. And uh, I'm really enjoying that. I, it's, it's, all these years, I've, I've never really known much about Mahara, um, just except for seeing her in videos and and some of the video talks that she's she gave in, in later years. Um, but it's interesting at the beginning, you know, she's she's very young and she's she talks about loving to dress up and um, not being especially interested in schoolwork and and things like that I, <laughs> I, that just I, it's so charming <laughs> she likes eating meat yeah you know, yes. she was a natural vegetarian exactly and interestingly uh, you mentioned Bao and so did I. I I read in that book just a little while ago that um, Bao was nervous Nervous, the, the the early Mondali yeah. uh, died in 1924 of you know, some disease, uh, but he came back as Bao, which I yeah. didn't yeah. know before. <clears throat> yeah, recycled <laughs> <laughs> Mondali. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it's. No, a lot, that's a, a lovely, the woman, I mean, you know, David Fenster did that, but the woman uh, named Julia Ross wove all of those accounts of voices, different voices together seamlessly so that it just flows. It's a excellent. Yeah. There's a no, new book um, on the Blue Bus Tours that kind of takes you on that with with a lot of diaries but they're woven in such a way you don't get a feeling like oh now Monty's talking now Rano's talking now it it just all kind of flows nicely <clears throat> done done very well huh well <clears throat> Jeff, Jeff tell, tell that thing that uh, someone says why are you're so hard on on uh, on bow Baba and uh, I'm oh and you uh, you asked Eric, how how was how was Baba with you, Eric? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah I love that. I love that. No, I said to, um, I said we all know uh, to Erich in Monterey Hall. I said we all know how Baba treated Val. You know, and he never could do anything right, and sometimes Baba <laughs> would ignore him for, for weeks on end, and and just never could do. <clears throat> Baba just disapprove of things. <clears throat> How did Baba relate to you? You know, what was your relationship to Baba? He said, um, Baba was always very good to me. 
I had self-knowledge. Inside I thought, Erich, what are you saying? But immediately said, I knew I was a scoundrel. And whenever I did anything wrong, I knew. And I would look over at those all-knowing eyes of Bob's and I knew he knew. So what was there to say? <laughs> Bob didn't have to correct him. He already got, he, self, he was self-correcting. And, <clears throat> and eventually Bao, <coughs> Bao came to the same realization. But for a while, you know, he, <clears throat> he didn't know that he... <clears throat> now when Erich said he was a scoundrel, it's a different kind of scoundrel. It's not the scoundrel with a low self-esteem. Erich had a high self-esteem, you might say, but he knew that inherently he was selfish. If Baba pointed it out, Baba <laughs> knew. <clears throat> Baba, it was almost like Baba had perfect pitch. And if, if, if uh, Erich's string, one of Erich's strings were flat, was flat <coughs> or sharp, Bob would just point at it. And you know, you couldn't say, well, Bob, this is, this, this string isn't sharp. You know, you better say, yes, it is sharp, and then you better try to get it into right tuning. <laughs> and then he won't bother you. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but I thought it was, <coughs> I like that. <coughs> <coughs> Marsha, what are you doing <coughs> there in Chicago? Taking your dog. Masha, you're on mute. Um, it was fine, hanging out, going, walking around the lake. Just, um... Have you got a, <clears throat> you got a painting there that you can show us? I'm sure, probably. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah Masha. Marshall, your paintings are so beautiful. I yeah, love that uh, I saw your uh, your presentation on uh, Zoom. <clears throat> well, I could say I was a little bit embarrassed that I interrupted everybody and just talked so much. So I was kind of like only looked at it once. It kind of freaked me out. I said <laughs> I'd like to do that over. <laughs> you know, uh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> Wouldn't we like to do it? <clears throat> you can do it on silent day. <clears throat> <clears throat> Wouldn't we all like to do things over? <laughs> well, yeah, I was embarrassed. I embarrassed myself. <laughs> I was like, oh, I shut up, you know. So I was being really quiet now. I, was, I didn't think you'd see me there being so quiet. I, I mean, that's <laughs> I'm going to take you where I do my work. Can you see that stuff? Um, <clears throat> okay, I did never show this to anybody yet. <laughs> you can I'll try to put it so you can see it kind of good. Dark in here. There's not too much light. Nope. I've been breaking everything. <coughs> Can you see this? Ooh, yeah. Should I go closer or further? Uh, uh, no, bring ah. it up, uh, up a little bit, and uh, no, uh, up a little bit. No, you're going down. Up. Up. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And go to your uh, left. No, oh, the other direction. Sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, go, go a little bit more. Down. Now uh, up. Go up. Uh, no, the other way up. Oh, your up is my down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's reversed. I don't okay. Know okay. Okay. But, yeah. Well, wow, that's very cheery. Beautiful. Uh, that's in the back by the old and by the old Pilgrim Center. Uh huh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Way back when, beautiful. Nineteen, yeah, nineteen ninety-four. Oh, I like that. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Let's see, the, let's see the bottom of it. 
can you pull it uh, up or down well uh, if, you, if you tell me up go, i'll go down go, go one day yeah yeah uh, there that's better yeah yeah closer uh, that's good no you got it good. lovely you want to yeah. see another one yeah there. one more <clears throat> okay This this pandemic has gotten a lot of uh, <coughs> painting out of you. Oh yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, well, you've I been. I did those a long time ago. But I mean, a lot of it. But you have been doing a lot. Oh yeah, every day. Yeah. I'm looking for one that I didn't put on the sh in the slideshow. It doesn't okay. matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. I got the one. No, they're beautiful. Yeah. Okay, this one's kind of. I don't know if you'll be able to see it well. Make sure it's in the right direction. Okay. All we're seeing is your arm, I think. Yeah, I didn't. I just put it there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I think I'm dyslexic or something. Yeah. Uh, and let's see. Uh, bring go up. You go up. No, the other way. <laughs> it's down. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. More. More. Me. Yeah, there. Yeah. Now yeah. we're at the bottom. Yeah. Wow. wow, that's really. I love it. Wow. Yeah, I've never showed it to anybody. It's just been yeah. here. It's been yeah. my. Yeah. Colors are beautiful. Yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. What's, the, what's the media? What are you doing it with? Um, I think these are watercolor crayons. Watercolor. Like we, the yeah. crayons that you color with, and then you add water. Wow. So then I add. So then I added paint, you know, paint to it too if I needed, but yeah. You see off to the left side, don't move it. You can see Baba off to the left side a little bit on that oh. tree. <clears throat> oh, wow. Yeah, in the middle, right? Yeah. In the yeah. Gray tree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The thing is, he sneaks, he puts, he's, I, he puts, he's there in all of them, you know? In the yeah. Middle. Yeah. Yeah. If I, I never heard of crayons with water. What? Color crayons. That sounds yeah. great. That's yeah, they're cool. um just like crayons, and you draw with them, and then you, you know, take your brush, blah blah blah, and you know, wet, wet, it, wet the brush yeah. a little bit. And uh, yeah. the thing is, you gotta go real light with them because they're heavy, you know. Yeah. 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 Now I got the pencils instead of the crayons, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but they'll last longer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Let's see what else. Um. Any uh, uh, let let's see someone. Uh, let's see the go back to the gallery. Me? Okay. No, no uh, um, I'm thinking of um, of J. Sima. Okay, thank you. Back to the yeah. Thank you, Marsha. Yeah. I guess Jeff, you need to uh, do it uh, on your. Oh oh oh! I see. Yeah. Somehow we. Oh, okay. There we are, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, Marinaz, oh, Marinaz. Hey, uh, before you go, Marinaz, did, did you a able to follow this at all? Say it again. You're able to follow what we were uh, talking about? Oh, oh, to some extent, to some extent, I'm sorry. No, hey, be, not all. Be, before you go, next Sunday at yes. 10 o'clock, uh, uh, Goer Mobed is going to share her experience of uh, her father was one of the Mondali, and then she's going to share her, you know, his, her, his uh, life, and then her meeting with Baba in uh, <clears throat> her own meetings with Baba. <clears throat> Jeff, do you know what time? Will 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock uh, our Pacific time. time? <clears throat> It's after the, time. after the Sunday RT. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it, it will be seven o'clock my time. Yeah, she's right. be beautiful, really a beautiful person, and speaks very well. And <clears throat> her father was Minu Karas, one of the early oh. Mandala. Mm. Yeah. And I'll be and, there. And a real seeker. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'll be there. Thanks. Yeah. For, um, the yeah. yeah. Well, I think um, what we haven't seen Alan. I mean, he's been and Dinku. We haven't seen Dinku. Ah. Oh, there she is. Hey, Dinku. <clears throat> Hi. Nice to see you, and we're, always uh, nice to be here. Yeah, I might, I might, uh, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> I may, I might cut this a little bit short tonight. I'll see. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, anything new with you, Dinku? Oh, uh, no, <clears throat> nothing, nothing. Nothing to report. <laughs> no. And we got Diane and Terry. They've uh, just emerged. Were you at your other meeting? Yeah. <clears throat> A great movie on uh, Thanksgiving 1995 when Katie Arani came to Maryland. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, Billy Goodrum was her chauffeur. Uh -huh. Yeah. And there were some great, great stories from people. Yeah, Katie was neat. Very um great personality. And and then they showed another video. Do you know the eye doctor from here in LA, Michael Lippman? No. Oh, he, was, no, he held court at Mondelay Hall with Katie and a lot of the Mondelay were there. Uh -huh. He held what? Court? Like held court, you know, like uh, he was telling stories. Uh, Did you know him, Rosalie? No, I, I know. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I know Barbara McReynolds, and, you know, just because I was in L.A. so long. Right. But, but I mean, it's not like I would see her at meetings or anything. You just know where everyone is, you know. But they have a they have a lot of wonderful tapes there by uh, Phyllis Fredwick that could be very beneficial to the Baba Love of Men. You know. And uh, they're they're just sick there, I think. <coughs> and oh it's anyway, it's Barbara McReynolds' brother has all of these uh, audio video tapes of Phyllis Frederick. It was like amazing. Yeah. 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 You could listen you could listen for three straight days to Phyllis Frederick yeah. and, and, and never get tired. She was so yeah. insightful. So uh, she was really really someone to be around. <clears throat> she had a wealth yeah. of of stories but also insights and everything. Yeah. 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 I mean, Phil, uh, Baba said to Darwin, Darwin time, isn't Phyllis wonderful? And she didn't find out about that till uh, 20 years after it was said. <laughs> yeah. However that happened, but she did hear about it. And what a wonderful thing to hear from yeah. Baba. Yeah. Hey, so should we have a final quote here, or any any questions <clears throat> that you that someone wants to throw out into the the pot? Uh, yeah, Jeff, I have a question, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, when you were talking about Bao was uh, the reincarnation of of one of the older Mandali. Yeah. Um, does that mean that? Uh, he was born as that person or did he pick, he was already born and then you know sort of it was like sort of like a walk-in <clears throat> no no uh, nervous d uh, died back 
<clears throat> I think he died in the 20s and yeah. then was reincarnated as Bal Kalshuri. <clears throat> it's the same okay. soul, just, you know, uh, uh, he, you know, passed on and then reincarnated as Bal Kalshuri. Okay, thanks. You know, I once asked Bal Kalshuri, what, what was the trait in him that Baba didn't like so much? <laughs> <clears throat> and he said he, he had a very hard time speaking up. You know, all these men were so strong and they'd been with Baba for so long and they were older and he was just a young kid on the block. And he, he had a hard time speaking up. He, he wasn't able to speak up until after Baba dropped his body. He finally, <clears throat> you know, he finally asserted himself. But these guys were, were just, um, very strong personalities around Baba, and he he had a he's kind of a balance of masculine and feminine, and um, you know he he you know he he realized that Baba was not pleased with the fact that he wouldn't speak up, but he just had a hard time, you know. <clears throat> so if you feel if you have difficulty speaking up, <clears throat> you're in good company. Maybe he was nervous. Yeah, he was nervous. <laughs> 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 Who said that? That was good. Oh, that was Jay. <laughs> I didn't. I never thought of that. You know, <laughs> it, it even carried over into his next yeah. incarnation. <laughs> you never get rid of these things. <laughs> He's, you know, when he's about to get a uh, realization, he's going to be so nervous, you know. <laughs> I have something. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we were talking this morning a lot about that at Mara's Women's Tea about how we don't have control of things only our own reactions. <clears throat> Those of you jump in here and help me here. Um, talked a lot about faith. About what? Faith. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I find <clears throat> it's hard to stop your reactions, but you can stop, you can control your reaction to your reactions. <clears throat> In other words, if if that painting suddenly fell fell off the wall behind you, it would probably give you a scare. You can't stop that, <clears throat> but you cannot beat your, You don't have to beat yourself up about the fact that the painting has fallen off the wall. <clears throat> you know, you, you, we have the <clears throat> certain measure of freedom on how we want to respond to our reactions. Does that make sense? Because if you try to <clears throat> eliminate all your reactions, I don't think you'll ever succeed. Because I, I was, <clears throat> I mean, I, I was actually heartened when Erich told, described when, when the train was coming down the tracks and they were with Baba and they had all this luggage, they're going to have to get Baba on the train <clears throat> and there's only, they only have five minutes to get everything on. He said he would feel, every time he would feel a tremendous dread <clears throat> to be able to try to get into, get, get all of the luggage sometimes through the windows, at that, sometimes get Baba through the windows and, and sometimes everybody wouldn't get on or someone would have to bring the luggage with the next, you know, the next train. And, you know, but, but his anxiety <clears throat> is in the service of Baba. It's different from just, per, you know, personal anxiety, so to speak. Uh, I mean, I'm sure, <clears throat> I mean, it's, but, um, so, I, I mean, I actually felt comfort, like, wow, you know, if Erich is getting uh, if dr nervous and dread and dreading these things, well, I, I shouldn't be, I, I shouldn't hold myself to 
the impossible standards that I was holding myself to. And I remember when I was young and Mara said that she had a fear of altitudes and to go up to a top of seclusion hill <clears throat> she would even as she got higher up she had to go out uh, crawl on her hands and knees <clears throat> and but she she related it and she it wasn't like a problem for her I mean to to relate to that because <clears throat> I, I thought being young and immature and Bob I thought wow if she hasn't overcome a fear of altitudes by now after being with the avatar for the last 40 years <clears throat> what you know but but I mean is she didn't di didn't didn't uh, that didn't bother her her shortcomings <clears throat> you know and uh, yeah in other words after all these years she still still hadn't overcome that fear Oh, we got Marsha up here. Yeah. Yeah, I found my folder that I have of Baba quotes, and I never read my quote at the beginning of the new year. And I just yeah. read it yesterday after I was yeah. kind of found uh, out. Yeah. It said, do your duty faithfully and conscientiously and put it above everything else. Then you will please me. Neither praise nor blame should distract you from the path of your duty. Leave aside all other considerations but your point of duty. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. yeah. And then I found this um, little one-page thing called Divine Love. I don't know if it was Rumi or Hafiz. It says, one day when I went out a walking, I met one where the road was forking. He looked an honest sort of man. I said, good day. We fell a-talking. By the roadside we sat and cracked many a joke. We talked of this and that, and then of God he spoke. I said, can you prove that God is? He answered, can you prove a kiss? I said, yes, by experience. He said, the same applies to this. But if you want to try love, you have to take a chance. He only can deny love who never knew romance. The same applies to love divine. You cannot stand on the sideline and vainly split hairs and debate. Go beg God for his holy wine, for truth's most found by thinking, but is your sweetheart's glance, the wine of which by drinking you learn love's sacred dance. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. I have one more little one. It says, when mind soars in pursuit of the things conceived in space, it pursues emptiness. But when man dives deep within himself, he experiences the fullness of existence. Mayor Baba, 1964. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who's shoulder. <laughs> <clears throat> well, anything, anything else? That <clears throat> yeah, I, I have this. This helps me every day by Eric. I mean, it really helps me. Simple and natural. Life is a joy with him. Without him, it is not. Joy is living with him. This is the new life. You're living from the heart, not the mind. He is the deeper self. There is no one to love except yourself. The self is God. Love yourself more and more. This is your inner being. And I, I got this wonderful picture. Of, this is uh, Eric sitting on the uh, the, uh, the threshold of Bandali Hall. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It. No, that's that. That's a very unusual quote. <clears throat> I love it. Yeah. I, I love yeah. It. Well. Where is, where is that from, Rosalie? Betty Grant gave it to me once upon a time. And, yeah. But it's just, it's so, uh, I mean. I've, I've seen that quote, but I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know where it's from, though. But it's something that he, 
Yeah, it, it's it's. Oh, it might be in Rustam Falahati's book, possibly. I don't know, but it, it, it yeah. also feels so very arid. I mean, yeah. like that perfect companion, you know. <laughs> Rosalie may repeat her yeah. book again. Yeah. Rosalie yeah. may repeat, yes. Yeah. You want it read again? Yeah. Yes. Simple and natural. Life is a joy with him. Without him, it is not. Joy is living with him. This is the new life. You're living from the heart, not the mind. He is the deeper self. There is no one to love except yourself. The self is God. Love yourself more and more. This is your inner being. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see if we can find that eventually. Yeah. Well, I think, what do you say? I think. Time Let's, to leave. <laughs> Time to leave. Yeah, Nasreen, you know, when we uh, we'll have a few moments of silence and yes. then <clears throat> and then have you say Avatar Mayor Baba three times. Sure. Okay, I, we gotta hear that voice. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Okay, Nasreen. Okay. Oh. Are you ready? Yes. Athar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Athar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Athar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Okay. Athar Meher Baba Ki Jay. Thank you. Thank you all. Yep, see you guys. You. Yes. But just to let you know, uh, Goer Moabed is going to share her <clears throat> times uh, with Baba next next Sunday at 10 and also tell about her <clears throat> the story of her father, Minu mm -hmm. Karas. Minu Karas. Yeah. It's a very beautiful story. Yeah. Wonderful. <clears throat> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Yeah. Jay Baba. Thanks for arranging all these people to come for us to see, listen yeah. to. We sure. appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice of you. Yeah. Thank you. Jay Baba. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Jay Baba.